<laughs> Rob, Rob, where's Rob? Where's Rob? <laughs> come on, 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 get back in. Hang on, Mr. Johnson. This one for me, this one for me. This is 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 for me. Tommy was a funk The event has been for a, a local school um, where there's been a van provided for them to go on um, local tours, etc. And it's been provided by the pub. Um, Jimmy's been kind enough to come tonight and give full support and has done a wonderful job. People like yourself have done a fantastic job as well and everyone for turning up to make it a success. And do you, do you like doing a lot of uh, charity work yourself? I do lots of charity work. I do lots for um, Five Star Scanner as well. I, um, I put lots of money into that um, over the period of the year. I tend about three to four functions there and they're quite expensive, but it's for a fantastic cause. Is there so, pressure? Is when there you... pressure when you put these events on? No, I don't think there's pressure because I think, I think the pressure is on the people that we're doing it for. We're, we're very fortunate in life, so we have no pressure that way. Because well, your background, I mean, you used to be a footballer, didn't you? I had a short spell at Nottingham Forest when I was very young, 17. And from there, I've been fortunate and lucky in business and made a successful lifestyle in business. And is it because you've been successful in business that you like to put something back into a community? Most certainly, yes. And, it's, and it's every opportunity, um, I spend as much as I possibly can into organisations like this because for a wonderful cause. Do you have a favourite charity? Um, no, I, su I support, um, well I suppose in saying that I do, I'm sorry, the five star scanner appeal is fantastic because they're all terminally ill children that never recover and so that is a special one. And does your fiancée Karen, does she help you? charity work? Most certainly and she spends quite a lot of money herself and I'm not just saying that, that we spend money it's not that at all it's it's to support the charity. How much? How much did you tie up? How much did you tie up? How are you Jill? How are you getting on? I don't know about the body bit yet. <laughs> I told him about that. Yeah. How many shots start? Four shots. Four shots start. What about if you break? You pop it off the break, you still got four. You don't pop it off the break, you take off four. I guess we read that by shot. You make a foul, you lose three shots and I get it. Four shots. Four shots start. Five shots in the first place. Five shots in the first place. Let's get this game on the show. On the hey, on. Get up, get on the pocket seat now, sir. No clapping, everybody. Yeah. Tell us a bit about you. You know Jimmy? I know him very well. Yeah, um, he was the first. He was the first when I turned professional '86. He was the first professional that come up to come up to me and said, "Hey, you going, Steve? I've heard you great amateur career. All the best." And he says, "Your kit, your shoes, your shoe, your uh, cue is not very good." Um, and he told me where to go and get an Untenow Burn cue, and I did that. And from then on. Things went brilliant and got to know him really well and became really good friends. Have you had many evenings out with him? Too many, that's my trouble. Like, that's why I've packed the game in now. I couldn't cope anymore. It was just too much. I remember us going to Thailand for a week. Um, no, 
No, yeah, I was just, I was, I gave him. Oh, I get a side too. I gave him a, no, I gave him a prompt. I said, you might mention, I mean, that's why I'm laughing. They don't yeah, need the prompt. Uh, I remember us. Um, you can tell whatever you want, Steve. It's everything. I remember Jimmy saying, because we just dropped down out of the top 16, me and Jimmy, the one year, and, um, and we both had to win a qualifying match, and we were both, because we, we love Thailand so much, we were so much under pressure to win, and we both won. We celebrated, and Jimmy says, "Come on, let's go a week before, let's go a week before the tournament starts, and we get loads of practice, get acclimatised to everything, and um, and uh, we'll be good for the tournament." Well, I thought, yeah, that sounds good. Well, one day, two day, three days pass. We got drunk every night. Can't I, I, actually, I don't remember the first five days, and. Um, and I, we got to Bangkok about two hours before our matches. I lost 5 0, and I think Jimmy won, won 5 0. So he was obviously used to it better than me. But, uh, There's a lively chap. Oh, he, he's. Uh, but I couldn't. I was, I was a diabetic, just diagnosed diabetes, and I couldn't cope with, uh, with all that drink anymore. So. How do you rate him in the all time list? He's got to he's gotta be one, obviously top two three natural players of all time even even the number one and and I, but more importantly as a as a person as a and as a friend you don't get any better than that he's fantastic he's a fantastic lad do you think there are many personalities like Jimmy in the game at the moment that's the trouble there isn't there isn't uh, Alex Higgins they they took all his points away and they didn't realize that it destroyed the game by not having such a name you've got to have a macker you've got to have somebody that's different in sports else the sport becomes very robotic and boring and that's what's happened now there's no sponsors there's no interest there's that's why I, I had enough I had the talent to have probably gone a bit further but why should I work hard for you know, for peanuts, I'd so I bought a pub. <laughs> Does Jimmy ever go to the pub? Pardon? Does Jimmy ever go to your pub? He's been to my first pub, this is my third one now. This he's been to the first one and we we've had a come down and done a couple of exhibitions. We've had a great night, yeah. Has Jimmy quietened since he's got a little bit older? He's no different whatsoever. He's exactly the same by the looks of it. But obviously I haven't spent as much time with him over the last few years, but there, is, there isn't a lot of diff. I can't see much difference in him now. A good pal, Stan. Have you had a good night, Joe? Oh, cracking night. Always have a great night on the horse. And uh, how was Jimmy's uh, play at the table? It was fantastic as always. He's a great ambassador for the sport of snooker, and he's a great guy. On a night out now, Jim. Sorry? On a night out now. No, we're going to, uh, me and Tommy are going to go and have a little game of Kaluki because um, he thinks it's a bit tricky at roulette, so I'm going to teach him how to play Kaluki. No, listen, all jokes aside, we've got in about the main reason we was here, haven't we? Yes. Yeah, the charity, you know, that was the he, main he, reason, listen, yeah. I'm telling you, this guy, Tommy, does more for charity than fucking Bob Gildoff. He does, incredible. so. incredible. And this is where he's from, and Joe, like, the, you know, Joe's from Ireland, but he lives here. And it non-stop stuff, and like this, this is um, it's just a pleasure to be amongst it. it. It can't really explain it. We don't have to explain it. We, you know what I mean? They got the coats. That's the main thing. And that's it. Beautiful. It was fantastic. It was fun. Yeah. You know, but the, the the locals in the pub are fantastic. And this man here, Tommy Scrag, I can only I can only echo what Jimmy has says. You know, Tommy Scrag is one of the most fantastic people on this planet. You know. Listen, I'll tell you for an uh, example, because Tommy's very quiet like myself, you know, even though like I play snooker and Joe's like um, in the limelight, I play snooker for a living and he was telling me his story tonight, there was, um, I won't say what he bid for a scanner for uh, a charity, but he is holding the belt for Ricky Hatton in the World Championships in uh, America Las Vegas. on the 20th, it's not in Las Vegas, it is Vegas yeah. has he gone to Vegas yeah, now? Gone to Vegas. And yeah. he's there, and when Tommy told me that before, I went, well, why is he doing that for you, you know what I mean? Because Tommy uh, bought this scanner for these kids who suffer, he doesn't need no G from me or people who love him, 
anybody else. You know what I mean? He does so much for charity, and he has loads of money which he's earned, and he puts to put something back. And this is where he come from, and it's a pleasure to be part of it. Fantastic. Jim, Jim, yes, yeah. What Jimmy has said there is true. Tom, Tom is, <laughs> he has his Sorry. days. Sorry, could you say no. that again, Jimmy? <laughs> no, he's just Tommy. He he was he was a um, such an incredible footballer. If he told you his story about his Nottingham Forest days and all that, you'd be astounded. And he went to London when he was 18. And when did you come back here, Tommy? When I was 22, 23. When he was 22, multi-millionaire. Really, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, better not say that. Oh, no, no. No, <laughs> no but... No, will be after him. No, but he doesn't... No, honestly, I, I've met some people in my life and uh, he's just outstanding. You know, it, it, what he does for charity all over the country and... You know, to, you try and outbid him. Well, you was there in Ireland. You know, he's phenomenal. And he deserves... He doesn't need this crap. He'll probably have the bolla cake with this tomorrow. He will. But um, who cares, you know? He's a lovely, lovely fella. And he, and, it, and the children get the, ma the main cause. The money goes to the kids. It's not like these major charities that... Um, well, not major charities. But some charities, and it doesn't all end up there, administration and all that. This money goes straight out. Look at this. We're in a pub. Here, how much did the coach cost? Ten grand, ten grand. Ten grand, ten grand. Now look, come on, there ain't been ten grand made here tonight. You know what I mean? But they've, they've done it over a period of time, thanks to this man here. You know, not and just this charity. This yeah. Mrs. Johnson is a we're fantastic woman. We're doing it in half an hour. You know, every, every <laughs> everybody that frequents this pub contributes. You know, no matter how small, it all adds up. You know, my dad used to say years ago, "Watch the pennies." You know, the pounds will watch themselves. But at the end of the day, it's not just this charity that Tommy's good to, it's all the charities. You know, he's just a fantastic person. You know, I, I can't sing his praise enough. And I am very, very proud to be able to call him my friend. Very proud. No, me too. No, me too. No, no, it's phenomenal. I think I'm the best guy ever lived. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, you're up there. You're up there.